Hey everyone, it's Pascal for Bitter Bass Project and this was a video that I had a long time coming. Um, this is going to be my 2020 rod and reel arsenal. So, we're going to start with the bait casters and then end up with the spinning section. Um, I'll start off with what I have for uh, flipping, pitching, frogging and uh, small jigs. And my main flipping and pitching stick is the uh, Quantum Smoke S3, the 7 foot 10 inch heavy extra fast action with a Quantum Smoke HD 200 uh, and the 7 3 to 1 ratio. It's pulled up with 65 pound test braid. I mean, it's no secret that when you get into like the flipping and pitching, a longer rod will help a ton, um, especially for extra reach when you do so. And when you do hook up on a fish, that extra length helps you a lot to pull it out of where it is whether it's uh, wood under dock um, and mats or wherever you could be uh, flipping and pitching I run braid on mainline and I will sometimes depending on situation add a fluorocarbon leader that will go from 15 to 20 pound test mainly because when I'm around wood I'd like to have fluorocarbon just because braid acts like a saw as much as it's grass it's good to cut it out of your way um, it would it just digs into it like many of you will know it just ends up costing you fish and gear sometimes so next we will go with my twins like I like to call them and these are two identical setups except for the line and these are the vapor rods the seven foot uh, medium heavy fast action paired up with uh, smoke uh, Gen 2 reels, uh, both in the 7 3 to 1 ratio. Uh, both pulled up with 40 pound braid, one in IVIS and the other one in green. Now, why I chose a IVIS and a green for two identical combos? One, because I do like, in some situation, uh, being able to see my rod better, especially when I'm using a lot, a lot of slack in the line, especially for deeper applications. It just help me see the line jump case of a strike when I'm on slack line. It does work on the regular uh, green braid. It just helps with eye visibility for that matter. And these I will mainly fish, which you could call, like almost I'll use finesse jigs, but most of the time I'll run uh, 3 8 or half ounce jigs, whether it's football or archie head. I will do some time toss swim jig on them, just because I do like for the vapors being a lower modulus graphite, that they have a more parabol parabolic action to them. So since even though it's a fast action, it's like sometimes a moderate fast in some uh, some series of rod from other companies. So I did really like them for that map. But that rod 706F, the seven foot medium heavy, especially in the vapor, is pretty much the all around perfect rod to do pretty much anything. But I do love them a lot. Jigs and also small text. Like I did mention in my post uh, not so long ago, I had I do have voids that I want to fill in and the main void that I want to fill in is for the heavier jigs being partnered up now with weapons of vast destruction and the X-Zone I wanted to get into jig fishing these two partnerships did create in me an opportunity to dwell deeper in that world and the rod that I'm getting eventually will be the 7.4 Heavy in the vape, Vapor line paired up with the Smoke HD200 I have tested that rod last year and I did fell in love with it. I'll probably end up getting two of them just to make sure that I have a duplicate so if I do end up being on a good jig bite, I can just have two jigs tied on and just fish them endlessly. So if there's one that happens to break off, well, I do have a second one ready to go and I don't lose as much time. Now, for the power fishing and two other twins, one older than the other, but both are the same rods. Uh, they are the uh, now discontinued Tour KVD rod. Uh, the 710 medium heavy moderate uh, moderate action both paired up with smoke HD reels I do use these rods specifically for deep cranks so I'll go from a 5XD all the way up to 8XD in the striking line of lures I did try a 10XD and it's pushing the limits of the rods so I try to stay between the 5 and the 8XD for that matter being a big big advocate of braid main line Two liter like you'll see most of my rods these are spooled up with 30 pound braid and I will put a fluorocarbon leader anywhere from 10 to 15 pound test depending on uh, the depth that I want to reach and the bait I'm using for those that uh, might get confused by that 
a lower pound test for carbon will sink deeper than a heavier heavier size fluorocarbon line. So depending on what you want to do, uh, adjusting this and being just a leader, do end up saving money on just buying loads and loads of spools and having to have multiple rods with different pound test line, which is something that most of us will most of us like because line does get expensive when you get good quality line. Now another cranking stick that I do love and again in the Torque KVD model with a Smoke HD200 uh, this is the 7.4 medium heavy moderate this rod I will use medium sized cranks so anything from a 3XD to a 5XD and anything that will go from the like 6 to 12 feet range. I do also like to use uh, heavier bladed jigs or chatter baits on this rod and heavier spinner baits too because this rod is rated for one ounce capacity and half to a three quarter ounce is perfect for that rod and being part of the power launcher line and the torque heavy models this thing will cast a mile and with the smoke HD I do have plenty of power and plenty of torque when it gets to pull fish back to the boat especially this will be used uh, in deeper water so it helps shorten the shorten the fight again in the cranking line this is a small guy it's again a tour kvd rod it's the seven foot medium moderate this is my dedicated square bill rod i will do sometimes toss a lipless on them but mainly i use this rod only for square bills so anything from the 1 to 2.5 range of square bills. This thing will toss it perfectly, no problem. And I got it paired up with a smoke KVD reel. Again, braid for mainline, 30 pound test. And I will put either a mono or fluorocarbon leader in the 10 to 12 pound test range. Now we'll go with the only rod that I have that is not a quantum rod. And this is my Temple Fork Outfitter combo with a smoke HD again. This rod I bought a few years back as a do-it-all power fishing kind of rod so for crank spinnerbait bladed jigs name it and over time it has become my dedicated 3 8 ounce bladed jigs or chatterbait and uh geez something is happening back there but it's not me i realized over time that this rod is just the perfect combo for this and now for the last rod in the uh bait cast series this is going to be my dedicated top water rod it's a vapor again um, I did mention it before and I'm gonna mention it again because it is really important for those that are shopping for new gear for the season um, the vapor line having a lower modulus and graphite will have a more permissive more parabolic bend um, compared to a smoke rod and this being my top water rod I did felt completely in love with it and it has a near perfect hookup ratio the way I have it set it up um, got it paired up with a Smoke S3 in the 6.1 to 1 ratio. Reason for this is I realized that when I'm using Whopper Ploppers, whether it's the 7590 or 110, because the 130 is a bit big for this rod and it's really pushing the limits, I realized that this ratio was like the perfect speed for Whopper Ploppers. And I did end up realizing that this rod had also the perfect. Um, line pickup ratio for fishing slow top water even fast top water regardless it was a popper a walking style bait uh, like a spook or a sexy dog and i just completely fell in love with it again uh braid mainline 30 pound test uh to a mono leader the reason that i put mono on this and i can't stress that enough mono filament does still have a place big reason is compared to fluorocarbon mono floats it has a high stretch and it has good resistance for knots so being a leader on this with the braid it acts like a shock absorption and with braid as it ages it pretty much turns like an overcooked spaghetti so if you're using a walking bait or a popper and you walk it uh, sometimes the bait will catch up on the braid and then you just end up screwing up your cast and have to repeat. With the mono leader, again, it will absorb the shock and monofilament will stay pretty rigid all through its life, so will help a lot with this. So this will end for what is uh, bait casters. So now let's jump into the... So, 
spinning. First up, we'll have my jerk bait combo. I know some of you will be cringing in front of screens because uh, I know that a lot of you and a lot of people toss their jerk baits on bait casting gear. I do have a bait cast combo that I'll use for jerk baits, but sometimes I'll use lighter and smaller jerk baits and also soft jerk baits or so jerk shads and there's something about using them on spinning gear that I do like better uh, just for the fact that by concept spinning gear will have more parabolic bands than bait casting rods and last year I had the uh, smoke version of this rod now I have the vapor version this is the 610 medium heavy extra fast rod and I did ended up losing some fish uh, on the jerk bait because I was using too stiff of a rod. I decided to step down to the uh, same model but vapor version just to have a more parabolic bend, more permissive rod. Kept the same line, 20 pound test braid line to a fluorocarbon leader. So I'll go from anywhere from 8 pounds to 12 pound test depending on, uh, on what kind of condition I'm in, what kind of environment I'm in. Um, and this is a quantum smoke uh, speed freak. Uh, the Speed Freaks have been merged with the regular smoke reels for the S3 version and these add a higher capacity, higher capacity for the ratio which they merge with the new uh, S3 models that now have a 6 to 1 ratio uh, just as this one has. Now I'll go into my uh, dual finesse combos. Two identical rod, smoke series, the S3. Uh, this is the 744. 7.4 medium extra fast model both with smoke reels s3 and the other one being a older generation smoke still works perfectly the reason i have a duplicate is again sometimes you'll end up on a bite and it just makes sense to have two rods rigged exactly the same whether you're tube fishing uh, shaky heads pie baiting small texas rig or whatever just because if anything happens one of the two got another one ready to go for a simple weekend angler it doesn't make much of a difference but for guys like me We'll do some tournaments from time to time and just has a um, higher pace just regular fun fishing i do like to be able to do this because i can maximize my time on the water more and more uh, both reels are spooled up with 10 pound test braid and i will run anywhere from 6 pound to 12 pound test fluorocarbon on them just because i do want the sinking capacities of the fluorocarbon as much as a low stretch and high sensitivity for the braid and the fluorocarbon. And for the last but not least, this is my dedicated uh, ultra finesse or drop shot Ned rig combo. Last year I had the vapor version of that rod. This is the 7.2 medium light extra fast rod, Quantum Smoke S3. Last year I had the vapor version and I ended up losing some fish because the rod was too permissive. So I wanted a rod that had a little more backbone uh, without going into the medium heavy or even the medium because they in the medium they didn't add a length that I liked because uh, the 744 I already had them and I did tested it and I just fell in love with the rod honestly I should have won I should have went with that one at first but hey we all want to experiment we all want to try something and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, again got it paired with a quantum smoke s3 real size 25 so main line I will have 10 pound test braid to a 6 to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader uh, depending on water clarity, how shy the fish are, and what kind of lure I'm using. I might end up getting a second combo exactly like this eventually, uh, just because I love it so much, and sometimes I would I want to have a drop shot and a net rig without having to retie one or the other, or sometimes just running two drop shots or two net rigs. But All right, guys, so now that we have talked about everything, um, I just want to have a little something. I see way too many posts online on social media of people um, breaking reels breaking rods damaging them and I'm telling you guys this should not happen most of the time I know accidents happen I mean a tailgate is a tailgate we've all been there but there is one thing that you can do and it is a cheap investment that will save you a lot of heartaches a lot of trouble a lot of cries and a lot of money in the, down the line this is it that's the solution And I'm telling you, just this, just the rod sleeve itself will save you a whole lot of trouble. Just because when it's on, it protects, it protects your tip, protects the blank, protects the eyelet, protects the line, protects everything. Just with this, a lot of people would have saved lines, a 
of say rods from damage and from breaking because even though it would bun to something instead of banging the, the last eyelet the tip it's going to be on a rubber tip and it's just going to protect it and after this well you have your real glove and again this will protect the reel from dirt mud sand and also protect the line coming off the reel which in turn could save you heartache time and money and they make them for spinning gear they make them also for bait casting gear and again it's easy to put on you don't need a course you don't need anything it's just self-explanatory and keep in mind guys that's a one size fits most this is a 200 size real bait caster and it will fit just as good as it does fit on my smaller bait casters just like just like this so I mean for both of them top of the line maybe twenty dollars so for the amount of money that we spend on gear and tackle each year this is a cheap investment that you guys can make that will save you a lot of time a lot of heartaches pretty sure that a lot of people would not make posts about breaking their gear or damaging their gear if they just got this I'm telling you guys and even those with rod lockers in their boats this is a game changer because with this you can put as much rods and real combos as you want inside the locker and they're not gonna get tangled because what nothing can get between the rod and the line so nothing can get mixed up so you want to pop out the one that's at the complete bottom of it just move the other ones around pop that one out and you're good to go and maybe you realize but storing them is just as easy keep in mind guys that's a seven foot ten rod it's a long rod sleeve you just roll it up put it inside the real glove and done takes little to no space and you're good to go also one thing that I do like about them and I know sometimes it will happen I mean from stores to stores um, sometimes you'll have a shorter rod but they only have the rod sleeve for the longer ones well, if there's something that you can do is just roll it back into itself whatever you want to do for however long you want to do and just like this you adapted your rod sleeve to the length of rod that you have so this is it guys for my 2020 rod and reel arsenal i hope you guys enjoyed it um, wish you a wonderful season because for us guys in quebec and ontario uh, bass season is just upon us um, so as always respect the environment uh, be mindful of others uh, be mindful of yourself and tight lines enjoy and enjoy the outdoors